Hello, my name is Christine Montelongo, and I'm going to be sharing with you today about the happiness of Christ. This comes as a reflection on chapter four of Gentle and Lowly. And I'm going to start off by reading a couple of verses from Hebrews 12, one and two. Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that lay before him endured a cross and despised the shame and has sat down at the right hand of God's throne. When I first read this verse, I thought, how are you going to find joy for enduring a cross and despising shame? And it just all sounds so backwards to me. But when I read the chapter and I reflected some more, I started to understand that it brings Jesus joy when we turn to him and ask him for help because he's already done the work of dying on the cross for us. He's already died for sin. Um, he wants to restore us. He wants to forgive us. He wants to bring us mercy and um, redeem us. So I think that this concept is not new. It's something I've known before, but it needs to be refreshed in my mind. Because oftentimes I start to think in very human terms where, let's say, for example, a friend does you wrong. Uh, the first time you might be like, okay, yeah, I forgive you. You know, we're going to work it out. The second time you're like, ah, okay, yeah, I can forgive you. The third time, fourth time, fifth time, you start to get a little, mm, is it worth it? Should I forgive you? I don't know. And I think I start to project that kind of thing onto Jesus as well thinking that he's like us humans, but it's not true. He is happy to restore us. He is joyful when we ask for help. Uh, it makes me think about the father and the prodigal son when um, the prodigal son returns. We in human terms would think, oh no, the son who has squandered all of the wealth and wasted all time and honor and all of these things, but no, the father's glad to see him. Or in maybe... Um, if I take this into the example of my little toddler, my little two-year-old uh, who has frequent tantrums, sometimes I think they're warranted and sometimes I think it's a little unnecessary. But anyway, when he is having trouble with some of his toys because he thinks, oh, it should work this way, but really it's because he's doing it wrong and he needs some help. But sometimes his level of anger is way greater because he hasn't asked for help. So uh, if I'm sitting there right next to him and he starts having one of these temper tantrums, maybe he's just screaming, maybe he's whining, maybe he's flailing his arms, maybe he's kicked himself off to somewhere else and he's already um, gotten hurt somehow. Okay, doesn't matter which level of anger it is. The first thing I try to do is remind him that I am there which seems to shock him for some, for some reason. I don't know why, but that's the very first step. I remind him that I'm there. And then the second step is I guide him into saying, Oma, which means mom, help. And the sooner he says that, the sooner he receives help. And I'm so excited when he asks for help because then I can help him of the situation. He can be less frustrated and less pitiful and less in a helpless state. And if I think about myself as a toddler having a temper tantrum because of whatever life situation I'm in, whether I'm the cause of it or something has happened to me and I just need some help from the Lord. Um, I think this does happen. The Holy Spirit is always present and he gives me nudges and does that first step of reminding me that he's there. Uh, sometimes it's just a gentle thought and sometimes it's a strong pull and a strong thought that he says, hey, I'm here. Hello, I'm God. I haven't left you. And then the second thing is he does guide me into saying that I need help. And uh, sometimes I come into that stage of anger where I have lost all control and I just start uncontrollably crying or um, I lash out at someone in the family or I start yelling. I don't know. It's, it's very complicated. But God is there. And I can definitely tell that he is so happy when I come to him. 
So this story might relate to you or you might need to hear today that God is happy when you come to him with your, with your need uh, for help, whether you've caused the issue or it has happened to you. So I hope that is an encouragement for you today that Jesus is happy with you and he is happy to be merciful and he wants to bring you uh, restoration and redemption.